just showing up was a bit of a pause to my system because I'd never been west of Worcester, Massachusetts. So I got on an airplane in Boston, flew to Denver, and uh, then flew from Denver to Colorado Springs on what was a DC-3, and we bounced all over the sky in that hot summer time period, and I said, what the hell did I get myself in for? It was the first time I'd been on an airplane. And uh, here I was in Colorado, never seen mountains like this before, so it was an entirely different experience. And we got picked up at Peterson Field and taken on an academy bus across basically desert, all the way out to the academy. I don't think we saw three buildings in, uh, in what now is a very busy metropolis, of course. Uh, I remember my first experience with the altitude was they had us fill up these great big laundry bags with blankets and uniforms and all this stuff that we were getting, and then we had to run up the stairs from the ground level to, I think it was the third or fourth floor that we went to, and of course, you know, your lungs were just gonna come right out of your body, so, and this was before BCT even really started. I was one of the shortest guys in my class, and I would um, invariably get stopped running wherever I was running to on the terrazzo by some bigger guy who would say, you little man, halt. And they'd come over to me and they'd say, how tall are you? And I'd look up at them and I'd say, sir, I am seven foot five inches tall, but I run in a two foot ditch and I take off. <laughs> they would laugh like hell. And um, it kind of threw them off a little bit. And, and, and it was a bit of levity in my, uh, uh, in my experience. One of the serious things that I decided was that if I was going to spend my four years of college in this kind of a structured environment, then I was going to suck it dry for everything I could get from it. I did that from the earliest days in basic training all the way through my four years at the academy. I took as many courses as they let me take. I played the sports. I traveled. I, I did whatever they would let me do to try and capture as much from the experience as was possible. I made that decision probably two weeks into basic training that uh, I was going to extract some value for the price that I was paying. And um, it served me well. It served me very, very well as I went forward in my academy experience and then later on in life too. So one of the things that happens at a military academy, at any of the national military academies, is that you form very, very deep relationships with your close group of friends, your squadron, but really among your entire class and among the cohorts of people that you play sports with, you're in leadership positions with, you're in, in clubs with, or you just socialize with for one reason or another. And those relationships tend to be very, very deep because you spend so much time together that you have no chance to be other than a genuine you. So you really get to know who somebody is, not who they might like to be or they are pretending to be, but who they really are. There's a deep understanding of each other. There's a deep respect for each other. There's a deep feeling of caring for one another. And those kinds of relationships are special. Here we are 45 years later after my graduation, and once you graduated, basically every graduate is a, is a comrade in arms. It's a great group of people that you belong to. They all feel part of a shared bond because there's this common experience that, that you went through. Um, I treasure certainly the very personal friendships of the people that I was close to for those four years, but really all the people that I came in contact with because it's a very, very positive set of uh, certainly memories for me, but also it's a very great network to be part of. We had the notion that we were going to build a company that really fused knowledge of the customer's business with this, this new emerging field of information technology. This was 1978. Microsoft hadn't yet been formed. And so we were very early on. Most of the people who knew anything about the technology were what we called wireheads. So we had the notion that we were going to build a team of interdisciplinary experts that really understood the customer's problem, understood ways to improve the effectiveness of the efficiency of their organization by applying information technology. At the time, I can't even remember if we called it information technology, but it was computers. And that was the founding premise of uh, what we did. We had a very, very strong agreement that we were going to build a company that was grounded in a set of core principles, that we were going to hire people who really rallied around those principles, who valued those principles, 
And we were going to build a business that unabashedly declared that it was grounded on its core values. And we did that. We had the wonderful experience of being able to actually create a culture. We built our company based upon a reputation for exceeding customers' expectations. We hired people one by one for over 20 years. So we got to bring a person in one at a time. We were looking for people who, were, who had integrity, intelligence, a strong work ethic, who had a positive attitude, and who were really good at what they did. And if people had those five things, they were really going to be successful in our company. It was a great run, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, like my experience at the academy and like my experience in graduate school, we built very, very tight circles of people who, who are very close to one another because we have the shared experience of actually building a business. I get my energy from people and I need to, to be involved in things. So one of the first things I did was look to see how I could become more actively involved in the academy. So Jim Shaw, my classmate, was the, uh, was the CEO of the AOG at the time and he asked me if I would run for the board and I said, sure, I would. I served as board chair for four years. I took a pause for about a year and then I became a director on, on the USAFA Endowment. And now I'm part of the group of people who is trying to continue to raise private money to support the, the purposes of, of, of the Air Force Academy and the purposes of the AOG. I get up every day excited about what I'm going to do. And so I have now got a 10-year career of working in a philanthropic way, not just writing checks, but actually applying my time to actually help these organizations move forward. I relax by working. People say to me, don't you ever stop? I say, I stop, I sleep. Um, I relax by, by doing. I, 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 I like to be engaged. I like to be engaged with people. And um, I very much enjoy uh, continuing to be able to create value as a result of the things that I get to do.